பூர்ணமிதம் பூர்ணாத்பூர்ணமுதச்சதே பூர்ணய பூர்ணமாதாய பூர்ணமேவசிஷதே ஓம்ஷாந்திஷாந்திஷாந்தி ஒருவன்ேவேகர்மாஜிவிஷேச்சதுவன்ஸ்ட்ரீவ்ஸ்ட்ரீவ்ஸ்ட்ரீவ்ஸ்ட்ரீவ்ஸ்ட்ரீவ
for all three kind of people this three line very clearly describes all three kinds of people first who desires to live a hundred years this shows very clearly involved in his activities in the world and believing that I am the doer then there is no path, no other path than this the path of living without being smeared by your doing who desires to live a hundred years involved in his activities in the world and believing that I am the doer three lines understand desires to live a hundred years hundred years means does not one zero zero please understand hundred does not mean one zero zero year here hundred means what countless just numberless in some places words are used uh, just to mention the eternal kurvan neveka karma niji ji vishetcha dakkum sama evanda inanya de dostina karma lipya de nare you got the sloka huh? actually this is a translation done by uh, one, of, one of two translation i discussed and finally i took out a translation which can almost come near but this book uh, this is not available as a book let this be given to you hmm? and uh, there is a commentary on this book which is uh, totally confusing that's why i took it only sloka <laughs> the problem is if they translate perfectly they comment on uh, such a uh, uh, impractical way they comment in too high intellectual way it just goes over your head then what is the use of studying the Upanishad so my reason to bring the Upanishads to you all let it be an inspiration for you all to enter into the enlightenment and spirituality to become more spirituality let it become an inspiration ordinarily the Upanishads are studied actually only full study Upanishad I tell you I tell you honestly the people who want to brag about their, their intellectuality People want to brag about their uh, philosophical greatness. People want to brag that I know, I know. They only study the Upanishads. That is why almost all commentaries, the more the commentary is complicated, the more the commentary is popular. The more the commentary is complicated, it is more popular. If you see the Upanishad, if you read the Upanishad directly, you will understand how simple these Rishis are. How child, just they, like a child, they have written their truths. But if you read the commentary, totally confused. Actually, one Swami in Ramakrishna Mission, he was taking the class on Upanishads. One devotee was sitting. He said directly, Swami, I could understand Upanishads but not your commentary. <laughs> <laughs> the more commentary is complicated, I see when you complicate the commentary, you show you are a big intellectual. Just to brag that you are, you know more. And when the people who listen also, just to get the idea that they should go, go and tell somebody that I, I know more. For that they start reading. So it has become a, such a philosophical tradition. The commentary is more complicated. It becomes more popular. You do not know the nonsense has happened around these scriptures. First, Shankara will write commentary. Bhashya. Then Shankara's disciple Sureshra will write a Vartika. Vartika means commentary and commentary. And then the uh, Sureshra's disciple will write a Tika. Tika means commentary and commentary and commentary. By the time the whole truth is lost. There is a small story, Zen story. <coughs> the one uh, enlightened master, Zen master, went to meet a uh, traditional Zen monastery. There is a traditional, there is always two paramparas. The Guru Parampara, Jnana Parampara. Guru Parampara means just to preserve the scriptures. The Pitajivis, regular Pitajivis. Pitam after Pitam. That when once he becomes old, he catches some young boy and ties the rope and makes him sit, hey, take care of the petam, take care of the property, take care of these, all these scriptures which is written and kept the, kept by the, our masters. Like this, the petam is there. One enlight, the petam is like a preserving the milk. Enlightenment is the, like a drinking the milk. The petadivis, they preserve the milk and keep it safely so that we can go and drink. <laughs> the enlightened people who drink and enjoy and understand, realize the whole truth. One enlightened Zen master, goes to your Pitajivis and the difficulty is Pitajivis are always egoistic. Always. Because they have not drank. They have not enjoyed it. They have not enjoyed the truth. And this Pitajivis as usual Zen monastery is a very 
uh, egoistic guy and uh, when the uh, enlightened master came he asked the uh, pedagogy who are you enlightened master says just i am a dhamma dhamma means the man who, am, who is following the dhamma i am just on the path of dhamma uh, buddha's humble servant something like this he introduced then uh, this guy started telling do you know who am i <coughs> I am the great disciple of disciple of, I am the disciple of this Swami, this Swami, this Swami. He started telling his Guru Parampara. You know the great Bodhidharma? I am the disciples, disciples, disciple. <laughs> I am the, I belong to the Bodhidharma's lineage. I am, I belong to the tradition of Bodhidharma. I am the disciple, great, great grand disciple of Bodhidharma. Then the, till the time the enlightened person was keeping quiet. The moment he uttered, the enlightened person started laughing. The Pita Dhrili got really naturally offended, immediately shouted, why are you laughing? What do you mean by it? And in Zen monasteries, always they will serve you tea. They will give you the tea. The uh, enlightened master, he drank, he finished the tea and told the uh, Madhavi to give a little water. He washed that uh, cup and put it in another one cup. Then he emptied that cup, washed that cup and put the water in the another cup. He emptied that cup and washed the other cup and put it in the other cup. Then the enlightened master is asking, now the fourth cup water and the first cup tea, do they have any relationship? The first tea cup is emptied, washed and put in the other cup. That cup is washed and put in the other cup. That cup is washed and put it in the other cup. What is the relationship? Even the tea smell will not be there. Even the tea smell will not be there. In first first cup, when you wash it, Tea smell will be there. In the second cup, a slight color will be there. In the third cup, fourth cup, simple water. What is the relationship between the tea cup, which was carrying the tea, and the water, washed, 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 washed water, being carried by that tea cup and that tea cup? What is the relationship? That Madhavi got a shock. Then he said, This is the same relationship between you and Bodhidharma. That's all. You and Bodhidharma are, are related only in this way. Nothing else. The Upanishads have become just an intellectual property. You are, you are all having so many quotes. You can have one more quote. I know Upanishad to brag about. That is the reason they became more complicated. My feeling to give you the Upanishad is only one idea. To inspire you to enter into the meditation. To more and more live the spiritual life. Nothing else. There is a um, beautiful verse in Tamil. Arya kutta adi nalan tandava koni. Kariya tilkana iri tandava koni. Means, even if you dance wildly, take care of your duty. Even if you dance wildly, take care of your duty. So my very idea to speak on this Upanishads is to inspire you more and more into my business, making you meditate. Who desires to live hundred years who desires to live a long life involved in his activities in the world and believing that I am the doer. Believing that I am the doer means you are entered, you are based in the being level. That I, I, I. That I, idea, that I, I, I. Involved in his activities in the world, you are in the emotional level, heart level. Emotion does not, under, don't, please don't understand what you understand as the English emotion word. Involving in the activity means you need some motion. The energy. Emotion is nothing but the energy which creates motion in you. Energy which creates motion in you. Not this motion. <laughs> motion means <laughs> that our travel agent will do. <laughs> and I think he's already doing it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Let God save. In the Energy which makes movement, motion in your being is what is emotion. If you are heart centered, you will be continuously involved in the activities of the world. The other thing, who desires to live a hundred years, always intellect wants to live for a long time. Because intellect never enjoys anything totally. When you see Himalayas, intellect gives a running commentary. How beautiful it is. How exciting it is. I will go and tell my wife, I went to Gomuk. I went to Tapovan, I went, I went to Swami, I did all these things. 
Are you fully enjoying now? Instead of that, you think I'll go and tell my wife, I'll go and tell my daughter, I'll go and tell my relatives, I'll go and go around and bragging about I did this, I did that. No. Intellect never lets you live in the moment because of that you always feel a dissatisfaction and you want again and again and again to live. Once you live with the world without the running commentary, without the head, you feel so satisfied, so settled, you don't even want to live. Next moment, you are totally settled, you are totally relaxed, but you will see the existence just the whole thing. The first line, who desires to live a hundred years, for a person like you, who desires to live a hundred years, as I told you, the intellectual guy, involved in his activities in the world, the emotional guy, and believing that I am the doer, the being level guy, there is no other path than this, the path of living without being smeared by your doing. The, in Tamil there is a proverb, inserting a needle into the banana, banana fruit. If you insert a small needle, neither banana will feel and nor your hand will feel that you are inserting. So slowly, but inserting the truth. This line inserts a very big truth in your mind without making it very complicated. The path of living without being smeared by your doing means you live in the coal cellar but you never become black. You never become dirty. Nothing affects you. You never get smeared. And you are just fresh. As beautiful as you are. As you were. Anyhow. How you enter? The same way you come out of the cellar. This one line. The one line has to be commented from all the three levels. From Because the, this is the key for all the three level beings. This is the key for all three persons. For, for a person who desires to live 100 years, involved in, the, in his activities in the world, and believing that I am the doer, is all three persons. The key is the path of living without being smeared by your doing. So this key has to be customized for all these three group. Let me try to customize this key for all these three group. The Who desires to live 100 years, intellectual person. For him, this key, the path of living without being smeared by your doing means live without the running commentary. When you live without the running commentary, nothing you, not, you never get smeared. Let me give you a small example. All your dirt is nothing but your accumulated words. You accumulate some word which is not there. Now you all went and saw Himalayas. There was Himalayas? Tell me. How many of you tell me that there is there was Himalayas? Tell me. Was there Himalayas? What are you talking? Where, where it was written Himalayas? Tell me. It is your name. There was only a mall, the big thing which was there. You cannot even say this big thing. Something was there, that's all. But with the word Himalayas, you never related with that thing. When you bring the word Himalayas in, between that and you, you never relate with it existentially. You are again and again think, I see Himalayas, I see Himalayas, I see Himalayas. You never see what is there. Jai Krishnamurti says beautifully, wordless experience, thoughtless experience. And I tell you, even now when you go by the bus, make the whole, whole thing as a meditation. Whole thing as a meditation. When you look into the Himalayas, when you look into the Ganga, don't tell, oh, big hill, Himalayas, steep curve. Never create any words. Just try to feel what it is. If a child sees the Himalayas, what he will think? He doesn't know anything about Himalayas. What he will see? Just he will see. Just like that. If a child is... If a child enters in your room, how he looks at everything. Just as if he is going to heat the whole thing. He, he just lives through his eyes. He has no word. 
when you create a word anga gatsla when you see without the word you see the total thing you see the whole totality when you when you travel try to relate with everything without word try now itself don't think oh i cannot do i cannot do don't think now itself because the word i cannot do is also one more word the word i cannot do is also one more word don't believe that word i cannot do drop that word and try to see see there is a one thing the word is not your nature that you cannot you know, the, if the word is your nature you cannot drop it word is not your nature how to understand the word is not your nature in every day deep sleep are you having words are you having words so it means what you can be without words also your being can exist you can be alive without words so try just try try your best to look at things without words then this key will work for you living without continuous running commentary is the better path for the intellectual people the key next thing emotional involved in his activities in the world this is the ultimate way this is the secret deep secret of the karma yoga see in the first in the first line the experience merges you the experience disappears the second line experience disappears second line i do not know how many of you are able to understand the uh, things which i am speaking please forgive me whether i am simplifying it or not can you can any of you please now give me the reply honest reply because with this reply only i am going to decide how i will comment on the next shlokas if any of you feel it is going over your head please now you raise your hand no you can let it be honest so that i can be in the next shlokas i will more simple because i am bringing all these words experience or experience all those things any of you feel it is too complicated for me swami ji okay i can go ahead anywhere you feel that you are not able to follow or you are not able to catch the point please raise your hands because everything has to be understood which should become a chitta in you please understand i am not speaking just to make you feel satisfied oh i also study upanishads and go on run around bragging oh i have studied upanishads you do not know that swami karavidra kathwaratam swami he himself spoke to us about upanishads so i am not speaking for that let it become a memory a program in you based on which you will live your life so it's like a program in your being so please understand if there is some misunderstanding or problem in the program what will happen what will happen the program will be itself will become a virus am i right any it people <coughs> nobody is it you see the virus is nothing but the confused program am i right virus is nothing but the confused program if the program is not understood not done clearly then it becomes a virus so understand to make this as a program or a virus is your responsibility yes you see if you have done through amnya if you look through amnya visualize as if you are seeing through amnya then there will be no word because when you look through amnya you come to present moment you are simply you simply fall into the present moment as on now you are just being pulled by the past or by the future you hang between these two have you seen the hanging bridges how many hanging bridges are there uh, the, uh, have you seen the hanging bridges on the ganga they hang between these two ends you are also nothing but hanging bridge between the past and the future hanging bridge you are also hanging when you look through amnya you just simply fall into the present you just fall into the present you either look through amnya or just drop the words and see in a relaxed way very nothing you know, first sit in a vehicle relax yourself and have a clear deep relaxing breathing what niche yogi taught you that uh, breathing through the stomach that's actually zen technique in vipassana you cannot breathe through the lungs you have to breathe only through the navel you can you have to only breathe through the navel breathe in that way and see in a very relaxed way 
in a very relaxed way see when you see immediately the word will rise oh green black so many words don't believe that verse one by one like a uh, visualize as if you are plucking the flower and throwing continuously continuously do for uh, 10 15 minutes suddenly you will see the gap the traffic is less you are able to see without traffic and i tell you himalayas is such a graceful energy the moment you try that helps you thousand fold thousand fold it helps you if you try once that helps you thousand fold try simple ex experiment you are not going to do anything separately just sit instead of talking and chatting with the next person instead of wasting your time what has happened here what has happened there uh, my, by the time what will be happening in america what is happening in my house everything will be happening perfectly because you are not there <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> everything will go on <laughs> beautifully <laughs> and everything will be very happy <laughs> because <laughs> you can be sure of that. <laughs> Relax, instead of wasting time, oh what has happened here, what has happened there, what will happen this, what will happen to that. Relax, totally, enjoy and use this time, why to waste unnecessarily. Use this time, I told you, you are in the spiritual field, energy field. And above all, all the three, Murti, Stala, Tirtha, you are having. So don't miss it. Continuously use it for some meditation, some technique. Continuously be inside. If there was some technique to be found to lock, I would have done that. <laughs> but what to do? <laughs> no technique is found. <laughs> try, try your best to uh, use the times maximum in the meditations then in the ordinary talking or simply these that things when you relate with the existence then you will understand the whole thing is energy i tell you one more secret except the word himalayas there is no difference between you and the himalayas the moment the word disappears the boundary of you and the boundary of himalayas merges with each other you may think how can a word make such a big boundary a yeah, small example in the Ganga if you put a uh, bamboo then you can say this side Ganga that side Ganga am I right if you just lift the bamboo what will happen whole thing is a one Ganga in the same day in the whole existence there is no bamboo except that one word except the words which you are using there is no bamboo only this bamboo makes you and Ganga you see only the bamboo makes you and this, I and you. Tat Tvam. Tat Tvam means me and you. This difference is made just by the bamboo which you are using. The bamboo means words which you are using. Words which you are using is the only bamboo which makes, which creates the difference between Tat and Tvam. When you lift that word, you understand Tat Tvam as seed. When you lift that word, lift that bamboo, when you Lift that word, you understand Tattva Masi. I am, you are, that, that are, thou. Only one thing you need to do, just lift that word. You know, Ganga will become again one. So next, involved in these activities in the world. What if you are involved continuously in the activity? Two things you need to do. Whenever you work, don't think you are working for some reason. If you are working for some reason, you will be continuously watching the watch when the office time will be over. You will make your whole office hours as a hell. Fall in love with work is the technique for the people who are working continuously. Just fall in love with the work itself. That is the technique for the people who are involved in these activities in the world. That is the technique. You see, the moment you fall in love with the work, the experience of the man who is working dissolves, disappears into the work itself. The only hindrance in the Karma Yoga is nothing but the moment you work itself, mind will be asking, oh, when will this time end? When can I go for a vacation? When can I go and meet Nityananda Swami? When can I go here? When can I go there? Something. The moment you come and sit with Nityananda Swami, when can I go back to America? My work is all pending. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> so much of work is there. I am sitting here and doing all these things. <laughs> and, uh, and all the other things. When, when this, when this, when that. You see, the mind is such. When you do this, the glass for that. 
when you fall in love with the work, the very idea that I am working disappears. I can give a small example. The moment you get into the Goda, it's now today you are all again going to travel in the Goda. The moment you sit in the uh, horse, you start thinking, when I will get down from the long horse? <laughs> when this journey is going to end, am I right? When this journey is going to end? See that, if you again and again continuously think, oh, when this will end, still it is going to be half an hour, still it is going to be half an hour, still it is going to be half an hour, you will never understand. The half an hour will never end. It will look like an eternity. Forget that when it is going to end, when it is going to end and all. That idea continuously which comes in you, when it is going to end, what next? Forget that. Let your mind take the other course. Let your mind start enjoying every step. Oh, how the Goda is going, how the horse is going, how the things are there around me. Let you start enjoying the present moment and you have a full freedom. When you don't want to travel further, you can come back. What is the wrong? When you have the full freedom, why should you bother about the end? As long as you bother, the emotional people are always bothered about the end. You can always see, people who are emotional, they are too much bothered about the end. Too much bothered about the end. There is a beautiful sloka by Shankara. Tatakkim, 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 tatakkim. What next, what next, what next, what next. Alright, when you, the moment you sit in the Goda, you start thinking. When the Goda will reach, when the horse will reach the Kedar. The moment you land, when I will go back to, <laughs> um, again to my uh, camp. The moment you come back, if you live in this way, what will, oh, when the whole tour will end. And then next, when the other things will end. You are just going, going, going without experiencing. You understand? The moment you get into the house, the moment you think, when I am going to end this journey, when I am going to get down from this house, the whole half an hour, one hour or two hour journey, you will not be able to enjoy. The fruit of action is always understood in two ways. Kamini Kanchana. Ramakrishna says, the fruit of action is understood by the money. Fruit of action is understood. Either what money I will get or what pleasure I will get. What money or what pleasure. Understand the very journey itself is a pleasure. Don't think going there and seeing the small hole from which water is coming. That is not only the pleasure. That's the one pleasure. But the very journey, very seeing the whole thing. I tell you. If you see the magnanimity and the grandeur of Himalayas, only then you will understand the existence is a real intelligent thing. The nature, see the intelligence of nature. If you, unless you see the such a grand things, you will not understand you are a very tiny being. As on now, all our life is centered on our head. Continuously you think me, 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 me. Your whole life revolves around you, centered on you, you will never understand there is something big exists than you. Unconsciously, you never agree there is something more bigger than me existing in the world. Only when you see these great things, the, uh, what to say, the unimaginable things, you understand, yes, I think there is some, some other, other intelligent guys also there in the planet Earth. <laughs> then only you will understand there is somebody who is little more intelligent also, is existing in the planet Earth. We always think, you see, always we think we are the intelligent people. Even though you don't agree consciously, unconsciously, every one of us have got a clear-cut idea that we are the most intelligent people and centered on, on the nature is naturally centered on you only, the whole world is running. Your world. Only when you see these grand things, created by the divine nature, only when you see and lose yourself in all these things, then you will understand you are simply a small particle, dust. You are simply nobody. We are just one dust. Understand, before your birth, the world was not existing. It was running. After your birth, will it not exist? It is going to run. You are just insignificant. To understand, we are nobody. In, person, in the presence of the divine. Only I am telling you, see the whole thing. Life is not totally centered on you. Life is centered on the very life itself. You are just running around the center. 
don't think center is running around you we always think the energy is running around us no you are running around the energy see earth is only running around the sun for a long time people were thinking sun was running around earth do you know the truth long time people were thinking the sun was running around the earth so understand your life is not going around you you are going around life god is not going around you you are going around god the moment you understand the very life is there only you are behind it the moment you understand the grandeur of the life then you will understand you are insignificant you will never ask for what next what next what next the very journey itself becomes a pleasure am i right the moment you understand very journey itself is a pleasure then the person what will come what can never come and you one more thing you don't if you don't understand the very journey itself is a pleasure you can never answer the question what tell me what is a, what you can answer what we have all got except that tire sum hmm? except the tire sum what we got tell me if you understand the very journey is pleasure every moment is joy every moment is pleasure oh you will be just like a child enjoying the whole thing if you ask what 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 nothing will be pleasure after leaving the trip you will tell oh this is failing that is failing why did i come next time i should never try all these things <laughs> you will be cursing this person that person that person that person and you, you will be only disturbing yourself and disturbing others but the moment you understand the very journey is a pleasure very moment is a joy then you will see everything looks ecstatic everything looks joyful please understand we have come here to enjoy the very journey not to the ends and that is the reason the rishis have made very small temples you see the temples here nothing is big like south indian temples and no art no art no culture nothing to see do you see anything is there to see nothing you can't even see the gangotri how many of you see the ganga mata tell me you went into that gangotri temple how many of you saw raise your hands what did you see tell me murti what was that what what is the murti on which the murti was sitting how many hands was there in the for the murti what what all the uh, things she was carrying in the hands nothing see she went and saw somebody she doesn't even know what the hands are can you say you went and saw nityanand swami and you do not even know what the nityanand swami is having in the hand then what did you see the truth is you are not going there to see the temple that is not the goal only the western mind logical mind is goal oriented understand never be goal oriented be the path oriented enjoy the whole travel fall in love with the work there is a beautiful shloka in the gita which says exactly the same truth karmanye vadigaraste mahabaleshu gadachana you have right only to do the work not to ask for the fruits don't think i am asking you to uh, work without salary i am not asking you to work without getting the salary get the salary but don't continuously think about the salary when you work fall in love with the work then you will enjoy the working hour and the salary time both if you do not know how to enjoy the working hour i assure you you cannot enjoy the vacation because enjoying working hours or vacation is not the question the ability to enjoy is the question the ability to enjoy is the question if you have the ability to enjoy the vacation also you can enjoy and the working hours also you can enjoy understand your working hours is the one third of your life one third of your life is your working hours and america little more than that one third of your life hours your life is sir your working hours if you just work for some result some vacation you are wasting 300 days for 65 days of vacation at the most you can get 65 days vacation only am i right you are you are wasting 300 days just for the sake of 65 days of vacation of course in india i am telling in america how many huh? 21 days only go in the go in the you see in my case if you see i have no vacation no vacation but i never feel tired 
You see, I was not actually tired. If I am tired, how so much of joy can radiate from my being? It was too much of energy. One thing, I have done so much of tapas and so much of my experience, the spiritual experiences are related to that place. Whole thing started coming in a reminding. Whole thing started happening again. That is the reason I started feeling the boundarylessness. The boundary is lost. But the energy, the being has become such. You started feeling that boundarylessness. I see that I am walking in the balloon. That is the reason. I was just out of that body consciousness and energy. And moreover, I saw that so many, that is the place Shambhala, understand? Shambhala, how many of you know about Shambhala, understand? If you don't know, forget, later on I will try to explain. Shambhala, Shambhala is touching the planet Earth only in Tapovan, Gangotri, Gomuk. Gomuk is the place from where you can go to Shambhala. So I know the guys are sitting and enjoying and driving me back to Bangalore. So, that is the Shambhala where the enlightened masters live. The people who have left the body, the enlightened masters, they all live there. Today we are all going to the Gauri Kund. Please be aware, Gauri Kund is the place where Mahavatar Babaji lives. Mahavatar Babaji lives. I have seen him in Gauri Kund only. Yes, Mahavatar Babaji lives in Gauri Kund. Between the, the, the Gauri Kund together, not, in that region only he, he, he stays. I have seen him only in that place. So understand, not only understand, now itself, if you have, if, how many of you have seen the Mahavatar Babaji's photograph? Yes. If you have not seen, take our picture with biography and see it. Pray to him and meditate. I tell you, sincere people really see him. Get his darshan. Of course, in Gauri Kund, we will meditate on him and pray to him. Either to give his darshan or at least to give his presence. Some will meditate. He lives in that area only. So the, all these enlightened masters without body, they live in that Shambhala area. That's the area where they live. So when I went there, I felt a little jealous. They are all sitting and enjoying happily and making me <laughs> go back to Bengal. Anyhow, when you fall in love with the work, when you fall in love with the path, not only you enjoy the path, you enjoy the result also. The ability to enjoy, the capacity to be blissful increases more. See, you are having a knife. In the same life only you are going to murder or you are going to do operation. For both you need a sharp knife. The sharpness of the knife is a basic thing either to murder or to uh, do operation. So if you are going to enjoy your vacation or enjoy your working, working hours, both ways you need a sharp knife. The ability to enjoy. Am I right? If the knife is totally blunt, you can neither do operation nor do the killing. If you do with a blunt knife, the operation will become a killing. <laughs> operation will become a murder. You cannot do anything with a blunt knife. Same way, you cannot do anything with a blunt mind. Blunt emotion. Blunt emotion means always asking for the result. Alive emotion means falling in love with the work itself. Falling in love with the very path is an alive emotion. Falling in love with the work is a blunt emotion. So understand, let your emotion be sharp so that you fall in love with the very work, with the very path. That is the key for the emotional people. Third, the being level people. People who are based on the energy. That technique will be given to you. In the next discourse, so let you understand this and let you become blissful. Let you be in with, one with, let you be Nityananda. Thank you.